up. Good morning. Good morning. I said good morning. Answer back. Answer me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That lady didn't answer. Good morning, everybody. There we go. Bless up all your whole selves. It's another thankful first day in the land of the living. It is the final day of the best month of the year. Let's have just a brief moment of silence as we mourn. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a bittersweet day, you know, coming to an end. All good things must come to an end. It's sad that it's the month of September, the best month of the year, but uh, it's been... I was about to say it's been good to us, but uh, <laughs> let me leave that day. It's a good day to have a good day. Good morning, everybody. Bless up all yourselves. Hope you had a wonderful Wednesday and you're ready to get this thankful Thursday off with a grateful and appreciative heart. Whichever platform you're using to join us this morning, appreciate you to the fullest. Those of you on Facebook, the YouTube channel, the website, GBN TV, the loyal listeners of Classic 105.5, 105.9, as well as the folks joining us on Party Grenada and and go to Fed Facebook pages. Our regional brothers and sisters joining us across the Caribbean, a spicy Grenadian 473 morning to each and every one of you. And those of you joining us internationally, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Hope you will have a good day, are having a good day, have had a good day. All right, it is now 20 and a half minutes on to 7 o'clock. Let's see what's the word of the day this morning. This morning's word of the day is zest. Zest, Z-E-S-T, Zest, a noun which means keen enjoyment or an enjoyable, enjoyably exciting quality. Zest. Zest can spice up your life, fitting for a word that English acquired from the world of cooking. Zest comes from the French word, which is a name for orange or lemon peel used to flavor food or drinks. English speakers adopted the French meaning and developed an additional one referring to any quality that adds enjoyment to something in the same way that the zest of an orange or lemon adds flavor to food. Word of the day this morning is zest, Z-E-S-T, a noun which means keen enjoyment or an enjoyably exciting quality. An example of the use of the word, the young couple has a zest for travel and adventure. Another example of the use of the word, the seasoning added zest to the otherwise bland dish. That's the word of the day this morning, a simple one, Z-E-S-T or Z-E-S-T, a noun which means keen enjoyment or an enjoyably exciting quality. Excitement. Yeah, joy. Now that I know the origin, it, it takes on new, new life. Now that I know where it came from, the zest for life. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's see what's the thought of today on this thankful Thursday. The thought for today, don't forget how badly you once wanted what you have now. And then I'm going to add in the end, give thanks. Don't forget how badly you once wanted what you have now. Give thanks for it. We always be asking for something, we begging for something, we, we getting annoyed and irritated when we don't get it one time, same time. And then when we get it, we forget to say thanks. We forget to have an appreciative heart. We forget to show gratitude for whatever it is. Don't forget it. Don't forget how badly you once wanted what you have now. So give thanks, no matter what it is, no matter how long you've had it, whether you had it yesterday, it's been a year, five, ten years, give thanks for it. I'm sure we can all think of at least one thing, one person that we've prayed for and asked for for a very long time because we wanted it so badly. Don't forget how badly you once wanted it and you have it now, so just give thanks. A quick word of thanks. Two simple words. Thank you. So that's the thought for today. Don't forget how badly you once wanted what you have now. All right, let's see what is celebrated today. <laughs> the final day of September. <laughs> I'll try to be strong. Like, I'll try to be strong as we say farewell to the best month. <laughs> It's going to be a tough day for me, but I'll try. Okay, okay, I'll behave. I'll behave. Let's see what is celebrated. <laughs> Let's see what is celebrated today. Today, it is Chewing Gum Day. Chewing Gum Day. Only, um, 
proper English speakers call it is, aka Tring Gum Day. <laughs> Chewing gum day exercises our jaws on September 30th. Pop a bubble or freshen your breath with your favorite piece of chewing gum. Humans have used chewing gum for over 5,000 years. They may have chewed it for enjoyment, to starve off hunger, or to freshen their breath, much like we do today. The sources used to make gum resulted in minty and sweet chewable globs of wax or sap resin that fulfilled the human urge to gnaw. They were unlikely to produce glossy pink bubbles worthy of jealous pokes from siblings. However, waking up with it stuck in your hair was still a possibility. I know a few people have woken up with going to sleep with a chewing gum in their mouth, woke up with it in their hair. It was not a good time. I think as they said ice, put ice on it, let it harden, and that would make it easier to remove. So look like giving all your life hack. You're welcome. Where was that piece of information back in the days? I don't know, but we have it now. So if you have chewing gum stuck in here, just put an ice cube on it. It will stiffen, it will get hard, and that should make it easier to remove from our tresses. So it's chewing gum day. Chew your favorite gum today. Whether it's mint, whether it's fruit, whatever your pleasure, today is the day. Um, try not to be popping. You know, yes, pop gum, that is annoying a lot of people. Sometimes don't pop it, just uh, chew it in peace and harmonization. It's chewing gum day, a.k.a. chewing gum. Um, they, um, so indulge in your favorite gum today, whatever it is. Um, that's what you're going to do today to recognize. All righty, information time. I just wanted to hail up uh, the Ministry of Health uh, for the latest COVID-19 dashboard, not necessarily for the figures, but for the format. Uh, it has been a, a request for the past few weeks. Um, for more information on the COVID-19 dashboard um, and they have finally relented. I know a few weeks ago Dr. Mayanna Charles mentioned that they were looking at the changes that can be made and they will soon implement it and it has been implemented for the latest dashboard released last night. Um, the dashboard includes how many um, new recoveries we've had, the new deaths instead of just the accumulation and we have to calculate in our minds. Uh, it also speaks specifically of um, cumulative uh, the deaths, the cumulative deaths who are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, partially vaccinated, unvaccinated, gives you a breakdown of those figures. It gives you an idea of how much tests have been carried out. The test positivity rate, which, which according to the dashboard is still at 20.7%. So there's more information on the dashboard. It also includes vaccinations, how many people have received their, no, 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 how many first doses have been administered and how many two, how many two dose vaccines have been administered. Um, just a little heads up, the vaccination. You'll see a section, for those of you who would go looking for it, you'll see a section that says fully vaccinated population 23,980 and partially vaccinated 10,402, giving you an accumulation of 58,362. Some people are saying the numbers don't add up. But the fully vaccinated population the number you're seeing there is the amount of people who have received two doses. The cumulative figure shows the, the doses overall that have been administered. So they're showing you the first doses, the amount of first doses, and the, um, people, the amount of second dose doses that they've administered. I hope that clarifies. So just multiply what you've seen on the dashboard, multiply the fully vaccinated population number by two. And then, you're, and then you add the partially vac vaccinated and then you're going to get the cumulative number. I hope that clarifies because I see a lot of people speaking um, and confused by it. But it just shows you what the breakdown looks like, right? All right, now let's get ready for the morning edition of news. For those of you on radio and those of you on our visual platforms, it's time for us to bring you highlights of last evening's newscast. It's another thankful Thursday, a bittersweet day as we say farewell to the best month of the year. Good morning, Grenada. We'll be right back. Officials continue working against the clock and they believe that they're making some progress as they battle Grenada's first intense wave of COVID-19. Statistics show that the infection rate is slowing down. While they keep fingers crossed that the trend will continue, they are urging people here to do the right thing. Let's get that story from Joseph Cador. 
Two Grenadian medical doctors based in the United States have returned home to provide humanitarian service to their country as health officials continue the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Marella Alexis and Dr. Karina David are urging people to seek immediate medical care when they are experiencing COVID-related symptoms. And yes, if your fever is not responsive, you want to go in. If you have severe chest pain, we call it substernal chest pain. So right in the middle of the chest, it just feels like an elephant sitting on your chest. You want to go into the hospital for that. Um, if you're feeling weak, like you can no longer walk, you can no longer get up and complete your daily activities without feeling just too weak and too short of breath, you want to go in for that. If you find you're not making as much urine as you typically do, so you know usually you'll pee four times by now, but you haven't gone to the bathroom at all, that's a reason to go in and seek care. That's a sign of pretty severe dehydration and possibly even kidney damage. Um, there's a wide array of reasons why you should seek care, and I implore you to speak to a healthcare professional. But truly, the ones that we really are concerned about are going to be those shortness of breath symptoms and the severe weakness. Any changes in cognition, so if you're getting confused, you're having word finding difficulties, um, you're fine, you're not really understanding what other people are saying, that can be a sign of really low oxygen levels. We want you to go in for that as well. Both shared a comprehensive list of warning signs. Dr. Alexis is urging Grenadians not to wait until it's too late. I concur with that, the confusion, like you feel like you're getting a stroke, you can't breathe. If you're getting severe chest pain, I know sometimes with a cough you get chest pain, but if you're having severe chest pain, it's better you come and it be told you, okay, that's okay, then it's something else that could be related to a, a blood clot from COVID or so. So if you're getting, as Dr. David said, severe shortness of breath, if you're getting chest pain, if you're getting confusion passing out as a matter of fact anything that you it's better to come and then you we evaluate you and say it's okay you can go home than to stay and stay too late and things don't turn out well for you Grenada's latest COVID-19 figures show a total of 1,543 active cases, of which six are imported. 34 are new cases. There are 135 recorded deaths and a slight increase in hospitalization by three, leaving the number of people hospitalized at 73. Joseph Cador, JBN News. As mentioned in that report, COVID-19 has claimed the lives of 135 people in Grenada thus far, making it impossible for them to be able to share stories of having battled the virus. But for three survivors of the deadly coronavirus, their tale is one of being brought to the brink of death. Their stories were shared on GBN's Beyond the Headlines program. Christopher McCurdy in Jamaica. Wendy Ann McGuire, a registered nurse in Brooklyn, New York, and Richard Boker, a local number one bus operator in Grenada, are all survivors of COVID-19. The two male and lone females say the effects of the virus is one they will not wish on their worst enemy, as the pain and agony experience were a lot to bear. They spoke of some of their symptoms. Because I was weak, I had lost, already lost my sense of smell, my sense of taste, terrible headache, and I took my sharpness of breath. But as the days go by, I started having more and more symptoms to the point where I realized that I was having pneumonia. It was a painful experience. The headache was not something nice. The bad belly, the fever, it's not something, it's not a nice experience. But I had fever, I'm sorry. I didn't have the runny nose that everybody spoke about. I didn't have the, you know, the other bowels and diarrhea and headache and all that stuff. All I had was a heavy fever, a high fever. And of course, that high fever comes with um, the chills. The survivors explained that getting the medical attention needed was difficult, as the hospitals and healthcare centers were overwhelmed. Wendy Ann McGuire explained that even as a health practitioner, she was told there was nothing they could do for her. She and McCurdy spoke of a time when they thought they were at the end. The next day he came back and he said to me, there isn't anything we can do for you. We gave you the medication. We tried everything. We will have to discharge you and you will have to go home and fight for yourself. I pleaded and I begged with him. I said, please stop. I can't. I said, I can't even walk. At this time, I was pooping on myself. I was peeing on myself. 
I couldn't eat, I couldn't do anything. And he said to me, you have to, we, 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 we need the bed. That's how he said it. He said, we need the bed. We have to send you home. I felt sometimes out of it. I felt there were times when I felt like this was the end of it. Um, I remember vividly, there was a moment when I, I didn't want anybody to leave the room. You know, I didn't want anybody to go. Richard Boker, Wendy Ed Maguire, and Christopher McCurdy all kicked COVID-19 to the curb and won the battle. They spoke of the key things that helped them to survive. Um, being in a situation where there is support, um, people you can talk to. One of the things when you have COVID is that you want to speak to somebody, you want to talk to somebody because you feel lonely. And I think that's what contributes to a lot of the death. When you're, when you're home with your family, they might still have a chance. Somebody will pass and look, they will call them, they will still drop something. And in Grenada, we have a love because majority everybody in Grenada live with a family. So my mom and I'm upstairs, I'm downstairs by myself. So there was bringing the hubs, taking care of me, great up one of the great up, I was doing my, my regular scheme. I don't know how I survived. I really don't know how I survived. To be honest, like I said, I think it's God. That's, that's the only reason why I think I'm here. Because I, to be honest, I didn't think I was going to come back. Vaccines were not available at the time when both Maguire and McCurdy got sick. But they ensured they got vaccinated when it became available. For GBN News, Janelle McDonald. Grenada has numerous political parties, all eager for an opportunity to manage the country's affairs. Having crossed the halfway mark towards another constitutionally due general election in 2023, these entities are oiling their machineries. However, a former finance minister is warning that it will not be a bed of roses for whoever takes over the reins of government. Former Finance Minister Nazim Burke says the political party to form the next government will face an uphill task as he looks at the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. He said the country is facing a national challenge that will continue to impact the entire population. I say, listen, um, whoever takes this country now in the aftermath of COVID um, to, to lead it, and to try to restore the economy and the society is going to have a challenge of their life. You know, it's, this is not just another economic recession. This is not 2010. This is a problem in which the economy has sunk by, as we said earlier, uh, perhaps more. Burke believes that if the ruling government speaks honestly with the Grenadian people, they will work with the country's leaders on a path to recovery. The situation has not improved. A lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are out of work. Quite apart from the health and life, life and health issues, the people are, very, are feeling very insecure about the economic situation and how they're going to move from here. And it's going to require a government of, of, with leadership, with vision, with uh, sincerity to talk to the people and let them know where we are. What are some of the challenges? Don't mislead them. Don't lie to them. Don't, um, don't be insincere and be transparent. It's going to require honesty. Uh, at the political level and at the leadership level. Burke, who demitted office as political leader of the National Democratic Congress, three months after he led the party to a crushing defeat to Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell's new National Party in 2018, maintains that he was not pushed out by anyone. Buck may not have the answers to all of Grenada's problems, but he has at least one answer. I am not trying to uh, force myself on anybody. Um, my view was I stepped away from politics because I, I felt, you know, let's give uh, the party a chance to find somebody, choose somebody else. Um, and, and let the people come to their own uh, conclusions. You know, uh, they will realize, I believe, that um, I am not Grenada's problem. I never was Grenada's problem. I am not Grenada's problem. In making suggestions on the way forward, Burke says land use, agriculture and fishing are important aspects that government must give priority. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. 
As Mr. Burke peeks into the looking glass for the forecast down the road economically, the government gets ready for the short to medium term. It will prepare for the 2022 budget tomorrow by hosting a virtual three-hour consultation. The acting chief corporate communications officer in the Ministry of Finance, Mrs. Ruth Roberts, spoke with our news desk via telephone today, outlining the framework for the consultation. After an opening ceremony that will feature remarks from Prime Minister Dr. The Right, Honorable Keith Mitchell, and the Minister of Finance, Honorable Gregory Bowen, breakout groups will engage in discussion on elements of the budget, including health and wellness, education, training needs and linkages to the work environment, youth empowerment, digital transformation, social protection and security, economic growth and transformation, and the competitive business environment, among others. If you wish to have a say when the consultation is being held, you'll need to register before the session begins. Now, in order to ensure appropriate placement based on the area of interest, invitees are kindly asked to register now. We can register right now using the link provided on the website, finance.gd by noon on Thursday. That is to make sure that you are placed in the area that you are interested in. Persons are also strongly encouraged to sign onto the Zoom meeting uh, using their full names and, in, and or the name of the organization at least 10 minutes before the consultation begins. Another step was taken today toward enhancing food security. Rena Pear Thomas tells us about the project being initiated, initiated sorry, by the European Union. The initiative seeks to enhance Grenada's national quality infrastructure to strengthen the country's obligation to the World Trade Organization in the area of sanitary measures for food safety. Grenada is the sixth beneficiary of the Carreform European Union Economic Partnership Agreement, financed by the 11th European Development Fund and administrated by the Caribbean Development Bank. The island will receive €236,000 in grant from CDB to implement the project. Director of the Grenada Bureau of Standards, Robert Medford, tells us more. Under this project, we would see building of capacities in hazard analysis critical control points, HAZAT, and post-harvesting handling techniques. In addition to support capacity building, we will see improvement in the actual physical infrastructure. In addition, this project would also support our efforts in how having a comprehensive program for the effective implementation of the Exportation of Fresh Produce Act, thus assuring all of our trading partners that the quality of produce coming from Grenada, as I said before, is of the highest quality and safe, thus having a positive impact on the livelihood of our citizens. The project will create better marketing opportunities for local farmers. Director of the project department at CDB, Daniel Bess, spoke of how the project will benefit Grenada. This project also builds on early EU funding in initiatives implemented by the bank in Grenada by further strengthening food safety management systems with emphasis on agri-foods. CDB, through this undertaking, will, will help to improve Grenada's agri-food system infrastructure and equip agriculture value chain actors and stakeholders with necessary resources. Improved systems will be assured through capacity building in hazard analysis critical control point and improved management of post-harvest losses from production to processing. The Marketing and National Importing Board is one of the main beneficiaries of the project and will receive three refrigerated trucks to create better storage for fresh fruits. Chief Executive Officer at MNIB, Afia Joseph, explains. Increasing our national export of fresh produce and value-added products continue to be a strategic focus for the Marketing and National Importing Board. This injection, I must say, from our team it's like a dream come true. Refrigerated trucks. This resource will add support to be able to access our farmlands and increase the, the ease of access between MNIB and our valued farmers while ensuring that we increase the quality assurance 
that our export customers are looking forward to. The Grenada Bureau of Standards and the Ministry of Agriculture will benefit from training in the areas of hazard analysis, critical control points, and post-harvest handling techniques. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet thomas reporting. And while the food security project is being launched, we're being told about a shortage of eggs. The notification came today via a press statement from the Government Information Service. As we'll hear in this report, it's apparent that the shortage has been triggered by a resuscitation of tourism-related businesses. The Ministry of Agriculture says it is taking in collaboration with the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Consumer Affairs, engaged the Grenada Association of Poultry Producers and other stakeholders, and has identified a number of interim measures to address the shortage of eggs on the local market. Preliminary information has confirmed a shortage of eggs, which is attributed to the widespread impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Given the increase in demand for eggs for the hotel and tourism sector, as well as individual households, some interim measures will be instituted. These include collaborating with the Ministry of Trade to allow for the temporary importation of eggs to help alleviate the current shortage partnering with the Grenada Association of Poultry Producers to conduct an assessment to determine the level of readiness for egg production, assisting the association to return to pre-pandemic production levels, and engaging with stakeholders of the poultry subsector to develop a mechanism to mitigate against any potential future shortage of eggs. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. And moving along this evening, the Grenada Association for Retired Persons needs your help. It wants volunteers to reach out to elderly people who may find it difficult to cope during this period. We get details in this story. The executive body of the Grenada Association for Retired Persons GAP says the COVID situation has left their members in a compromising position that has placed many lives at risk. President of GAP, Nicholas Snag, in speaking to GBN, explained that many senior citizens in Grenada are more vulnerable than ever and are lacking essential items that they need to survive. While the association works along with many of the organizations that care for the elderly. Snag says items such as gloves, hand sanitizers, and even testing strips are not available. He is calling on the general public to help where they can. We do a soup kitchen, so we need, we be looking for a soup containers with covers. If you have any of those in some type of box, maybe you were planning an event, it didn't happen, and you have it just stored up there, you want to do what it was gladly accepted. Another thing that, that helps seniors to cope Believe it or not, is word puzzle book. The brain, you need to keep the brain sharp. Yeah? So all of those things, yeah? And um, he, 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 like I said, it's small things, right? Imagine you're a diabetic and you need to keep track of your insulin and your blood levels. How do you do that? You don't have a pencil, you don't have a pen, you don't have a notebook to write it in. That's the little thing like, I, I, I keep saying is what we need. The president is also calling on caregivers and family members to be responsible and follow all necessary protocols to prevent the spread of the virus to the elderly. You, you cook a meal, why don't you just share with that neighbor? Put it in a, in a nice bowl, present it nicely and bring it to them and share a meal with them. Have a meal with them. How about that? Have a conversation with them. Yeah. The, the whole idea of this thing is for us to love each other and care for each other. This is what I think is what we need to do. Members of the public are also encouraged to give an elderly person a call as a means of reassuring them that someone cares. Despite all the challenges faced, President Snag is sending the elderly community a sense of hope for survival through the COVID pandemic. There is um, um, hope, and I want to, this is my message this morning to our people, there is hope. There is hope, yeah? Whether uh, you you believe in God, whatever, spirituality, you um, subscribe to, there is hope. There is hope in the medical community. There is hope in the, in the foods and the exercise and things we ought to do to help protect ourselves. They have given us all the tools we need to protect ourselves. So the there is hope. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. Imagine having the home of your dreams. 
imagine investing in that piece of property you can call your own? Imagine finally doing that home improvement project you've always been thinking about. It's time to stop imagining and start doing. Let the GUT Credit Union help you take the first step with fantastic rates, affordable repayments, and reduced legal fees. Make the move. Get better terms on your mortgage. Use your home equity to make those dreams a reality. Act now. There's really no place like home. GUT Credit Union. It's where you belong. Store foods safely in the event of an emergency or disaster. Check expiry dates and store items that are closer to expiration at the front of the cupboard. Protect opened packages of dried items from pests and losing freshness by placing them in containers with lids. Always keep food covered and stored away from cleaning items. A message from the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council in collaboration with the Ministry of Health with support from the Pan American Health Organization. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449 To find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment, visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health. The Croton scale insect, a new threat to our agricultural production, is now creating major damage to several plants. Mango, soursop, plums, guava, avocado and crotons are among the main ones affected. Excessive sooty mold, black blight, is associated with this pest. Take action now. Cut and burn infested fruits and shoots. Do not move infested materials to other areas. Treat with horticultural oils and recommended insecticides. Request assistance from the Ministry of Agriculture. Follow all safety protocols when burning trash or applying pesticides. A message from the Ministry of Agriculture. Get Ruby Gas! Get cooking! Ruby Gas, clean, safe, and reliable LPG is the perfect solution for your commercial and everyday needs. For cooking at home or barbecuing, choose Ruby Gas LPG cylinders. Available in a variety of sizes from 20 to 100 pound cylinders. Ruby Gas LPG, clean, safe, reliable. Are you cooking with Ruby Gas? Once upon a time, we shopped at Wonderland, and then Neverland. But we're all grown up now and no longer believe in fairy tales. So now we just shop at Shoes R Us. At Shoes R Us, we stock the latest in shoes, tops, and jeans for the fashion conscious lady. We also carry colognes and much, much more. And for the modern trendy male, we have the latest brand name shoes and sneakers, Converse, Reebok, Nike, K Swiss, Puma, and much more. So check us out at the two convenient locations Melville Street in St. George and Ben Jones Street. Street in Granville. At Shoes R Us, we say, come shop with us. Convenience and comfort awaits you when you shop at Rise and Shine Supermarket and Hardware Supplies, Griffin Lane, Grenville. Convenient, because we are open Sunday to Sunday. We're even at your service on public holidays. Comfort, 
because we are easily accessible to the physically challenged. Free Wi-Fi is available while you shop and bags come at no charge. Everyday low prices and excellent customer care. Adequate parking available. We supply everything you can possibly think of. Family and home supplies, fresh meat, vegetables and personal care products. All brands of cooking gas at affordable prices. You can send in your order, have it pulled or pick up express. Greetings everyone. I hope this message meets you and yours in the best of health as we join in encouraging all to act responsibly. COVID-19 presents the most serious and deadly challenge any of us will experience in our lifetimes. We must act now. We need to keep the Caribbean safe. We can all help to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Please stay at home. So Caribbean people, please stay home. Caribbean people, please stay at home. Please stay home. It's that simple. This too shall pass. But for now, stay home. Stay in a yard. Stay home, stay safe. Make my position clear I believe in the word movement 
plagued with a troubled mind. You see my hustle and that's got my baby struggling to keep a smile. Been there a thousand times and I don't know when it'd be over. She'd be there to love me down the line. I may be working but my mind is on you. You may not like it but I do this for you. But I know in time you'll come to understand me and you'll know with time you'll never have to worry i know in time you'll come to understand me and you'll know with time you'll never have to worry i know sometimes i'll be out of sight Baby girl, I'ma make it right I know sometimes I don't make you cry Baby girl, I'ma make it right Whether from a thousand miles or with a thousand lies Just know that baby girl, I'ma make it right Give you my word, I'll be right on time Baby girl, I'ma make it right You wanna go, then you wanna stay Wrestling decisions while I'm trying to make a better way Praying to God that he comes my way Wandering the wilderness Looking for a brighter day Pour out your blessing Lord I call out your name And help my baby Understand my pain But I know In time You'll come to understand me And you'll know With time You'll never have to worry, I know in time you'll come to understand me, and you'll know with time you'll never have to worry. I know sometimes I'll be out of sight, baby girl, I'ma make it right. I know sometimes I don't make you cry. Baby girl, I'ma make it right Whether from a thousand miles or with a thousand lies Just know that baby girl, I'ma make it right Give you my word, I'll be right on time Baby girl, I'ma make it right I know in time you'll come to understand me And you'll know with time you'll never have to worry I know in time Welcome back to Good Morning Grenada, 21 minutes after 7 o'clock. Those of you just joining us, happy to have you. Those of you who stuck with us, thank you for your patience. Let's get into it. Joining me virtually this morning is the head of the Community Relations Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force, Inspector Trevor Rodney. Um, and he's here to just remind us of some things that we need to keep in mind as we get ready for, I think this will be the fourth consecutive uh, No Movement Weekend. Good morning, Inspector Rodney. Rodney, and thank you for joining us, sir. Happy to have you. Good morning. It's always a pleasure. And uh, good morning to the viewing and listening public. It is indeed a pleasure to be able to be of uh, assistance to you with regard to uh, the regulations as it affects us. Yes. Sir. Uh, before we get into that, just, um, just today is Thursday. So earlier this week, I saw some information on the RGPF's uh, social media about how our weather, recent weather, affected your communication lines, um, the lightning, and so it affected your emergency lines. Um, can you just give yes, us an update as to what has been happening so far and the alternatives available um, to members of the public? Well, at the moment, we have uh, since restored yeah, the lightning uh, when, when it uh, strike um, on Tuesday, I think it was, we, 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 our communications, our main communication uh, lines went down. But thankfully, it is restored. They, they are restored now. And so members of the public can return to 911 and, and 040 um, 399. All right. Um... So, we up and running now. Lovely. Good to know. 
So we are preparing for the fourth consecutive no movement weekend. Um, unfortunately, we've not had everybody adhering to the rules and regulations. We've still had some tickets being handed out. So I think it's important that we remind members of the public what needs to take place yes. over the next uh, few days from tomorrow evening, God willing. So just remind us of what is to take place and how the RGPF would be dealing with ensuring that everybody sticks to the rule and regulations of the protocols. Well, of course, and that is our intention, to ensure that everybody observe the regulation and follow what the law says. Uh, and we have to be optimistic. Now, our experience says over the past uh, three um, no-movement weekends certainly said to us that there are some persons that are violating by the amount of tickets that we have issued out. Our, our intelligence is also saying that there are a number of persons that are not observing the regulations with, with regard to remaining at the place of confinement as required by the law and wearing of the masks, face shield and other face covering that covers the mouth, the nose, mouth and, and chin. And that must be borne in mind. That is what the law requires, that the, that the coverings, the, shield, the masks, the shield and the face coverings it must cover your nose, mouth, and chin. We seen, still seen some people not covering their noses, not covering the, 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 um, the chin, and so forth. But that's what the law requires. So I want to remind um, persons that please observe the law. With regard to the, the violations, we, we still see a number of persons violating the restriction as it relates to no movement. And we want to appeal to members of the public, those of you that have been violating. Last week, I, over the weekend, we issued about 87 tickets, I, I think it was. So it tells you that across, and, and of course, that, that is persons who we actually met. I did indicate some time ago that persons are running and when they, you know, observe that the police transport is coming in the, in the areas and they're running away and so on. Now, it is important to recognize that what you're doing, yes, you're violating the law, but you're also putting yourself and other persons at risk for spread of the virus, which the law um, is trying to, to restrict or to prevent. And it's important that, that you recognize that. Now, I, I want Dick to call upon the law-abiding citizens to speak out against the behavior of those that are violating. It has to be a collaborative approach. It has to be everybody on board. It is a, th this situation is a crisis. And when there is a crisis, everybody has to be on board. You just can't, um, yes, you may want to be quiet, but, but it, it, you will be affected also. If you're not affected by catching the virus, there is going to be life after the pandemic and there's going to be implication, whether it be economically, socially, and otherwise. So we have to look at the big picture. If we don't look at the big picture, we are going to be affected in one way or the other. But if we look at the big picture, everybody would play their part and, of course, call out those violators. Um, you may not get 100% compliance or cooperation, but if we, if we call them out, certainly I believe there would be some, some, measure, of, um, some, some measure of respect for the law and for the rule of law. So I want to remind folks also from our intelligence that the curfew on, on Friday starts at 5 p.m. And I emphasize 5 p.m. We're still seeing people at 5 p.m. looking to get transport to go home, standing by the road looking for that. At that point, when the curfew starts, you are violating the law. That is something that we want to emphasize. You, you, we're asking you to observe. You, now is the time as to self-discipline, self-management. You know the coffee starts at five. Ensure that all your business, you get it done before that time and, and stay in your place of residence, except you're exempted by the law to be out after the time being. We're still seeing vehicles traveling at uh, high speed, in some cases, trying to beat the time. We, we, we're calling upon the members of the public for your cooperation, motoring public. Um, Whatever you involve in business public, ensure that you follow the law. The law was uh, created to control what we do to mitigate against the spread of the disease, against the spread of the virus. And therefore, all that you, you, you we need your full cooperation. 
we need your full cooperation. Law enforcement, we have a responsibility. Our responsibility is to remind you what the law says and to enforce the law. Certainly, we're going to enforce the law to make sure that what the law seeks to achieve is achieved. And and so and that is why we have been issuing tickets. We have been doing our patrols. We've been doing our, our, our checks, our um, checkpoints. We have our checkpoints. I want to speak on the checkpoints for a while in that we have some some persons, although they, they're in possession of a pass, and they believe that if they pass two, three times, the police should recognize them. You must realize that there are different members of, of the force that will be placed at the checkpoints. The same person may not be there all the time, that, that the same person that knows you and, and would, would allow you to pass without physically checking. So we 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 asking for your patience and we asking for your cooperation. That if an officer requires of you your pass, you should present it. Notwithstanding, and, and please patience, because you might be delayed in the circumstances for a minute or two. I don't think the officer would unnecessarily delay, de delay you, but, but it, it is just a security measure to make sure. And if the officer requires that every time you pass, even though you are you are exempted under the law and you're in possession of a pass, but for security purposes, please. So we've had some some challenges in that regard where members of the of the public um, feel feel that we we are delaying them unnecessarily because they would have passed that direction um, to and for um, Blossom smiling like she, you 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 you're you aware of what I'm talking about. But we we ask for your cooperation. No, now when you have you when you have a uh, coffee in place and you have lockdown and so forth. Security is heightened. And when security is heightened, there are certain things that you are expected to, to tolerate. And so we're asking for your tolerance and indeed your, your, your cooperation because there is a reason why these measures are instituted. You never, never lose sight of the reason why these measures are instituted. These measures, they are instituted to achieve a certain goal, a certain end. And with that, it has to be enforced in a way to give us the results that we're looking for, both security and, and otherwise. And so we, we, we're asking for the cooperation. There is also a provision in this regulation that deals with um, that deals with the passes that are also um, transitional provision. It says every approval grant, granted under the emergency powers COVID-19 regulations uh, shall apply as if it were granted under this regulation. What, what that seeks to do, if you have a, a continuing pass, there, there are some passes that are continuing, based, based on your on what you're involved in, you, you, you'd have a pass in that you're permitted for the duration of the... These passes, you, you do not have to uh, go back to headquarters to get them renewed. But if your pass is date sensitive, for instance, it says... Um, Today being the, the, the thirtieth, let's say it says the thirtieth. You you have to get this. so so there is a distinction, and not just a general um not just a general. It doesn't apply generally to say that once you have a pass, no. Once it is date sensitive, once it has a date on it, you have to get a pass renewed. If it is a pass for the duration, for instance, people in the in the um industries and so on, uh, the, the the hotel industries and and, and other other um, field of employment where that that is continuous, then you you don't have to you don't have to apply it again, and so that provision is there. Um, I I just want to mention persons that are exempted from um, from leaving their home. The whole person, the whole person except you have a pass. Oh, you are exempted. Uh, so, sorry, so sorry, can... Inspector Rodney. I'm having a little. I'm having a little trouble you hearing you. So say something again. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Hearing you. You have to remain home, except you are exempted under the law. So shelter in place. In an effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19, every person shall remain confined to the place of residence, inclusive of the yard space, to avoid contact outside their family, outside of their family, except. Essential workers reporting to work. Workers reporting to work in accordance with the regulation, regulation 9 and 10. Essential travel to an establishment business under regulation 9. 
and 10. And so it means that everybody else have to be in the home, the place of residence, except we still see some people sit on the block. We still have reports of people hiding in, in, in have a back door in some little rock shop and, and having engagement, especially in the rural areas. We still see some people heading to the to the especially young men. We call it up on this morning, beaches and rivers. And so yes, you're running from the police, you're not being caught to be arrested or on your ticket. But at the same time, you are exposing yourself and you are exposing your families and other members of the public. So we want to emphasize that except you have a legitimate reason to be outside the law requires and to remain at your place of residence. And for those of you who are exempted, you are exempted for specific purposes. You are not exempted to just you, 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 you get exempted so you take a chance and you are this person to come here and do something that is out of the permission that is given for your movement. It is important also. So we, we are calling upon the members of the public to cooperate. Let's cooperate. This thing will be over. Anything that is instituted, it is not instituted and eternity. It is instituted for a purpose. And once we follow the guidelines that we put on as, as it relates to the the, the, the law, it, it, it is going to be over. Just a little tolerance and cooperation. And, and of course, everybody, everybody comes on board. And, and, and this thing shall be over. So from the RGPM perspective, we, we are going to be continuing again by p.m. Uh, Friday afternoon to 5 a.m. Monday morning. And, and we, we anticipate the cooperation. Now that we have reminded members of the public and those that have violated and believe that they've got away, uh, we want to remind you we, we ask for this cooperation. We ask that you observe the law and go and start with us in the future. If we don't, we certainly will ourselves at greater risk. They shall at greater risk. Um, Inspector, um, your, your audio keeps going in and out. I'm not sure what the issue is, but um, in terms of passes, sorry? No, I'm not hearing you at all. You, you can hear me? Your audio is going in and out. Um, but let me ask, in terms of the passes, um, who are the people who can qualify for a pass What's the process, and can somebody still apply, even if I've never had a pass for the past three weekends, can I apply for one for this weekend? Yes. Once, you, once the, the business that you're engaging is le legitimate, once the business that you're engaging is, is legitimate, you can, you can apply for, for a pass. You, you apply to uh, the police headquarters at... at um, RGPS, RGPF, sorry, COVID ops, RGPF, COVID, COVID, OPS at gmail.com. RGPF, COVID ops at gmail.com. You can apply. And once your, your business is legitimate, you are going to get a response from, from the, the police. And uh, of course, you would, you would um, go about your, your business once it's legitimate. Now, if your if your business is not legitimate, so there, there, are, there are persons, for instance, if you're going to to get vaccinated or you're going to be tested, you're exempted. But remember, I, I did say that once you're going, even though you, you are committed under the law to move, that movement must be specifically in relation to that business that you're going to do. You're going to get tested, you go get your test back, to your place of residence. You go and get your uh, vaccination, get vaccinated back to your place of residence. You, For instance, you're going to take somebody to the, um, somebody who has to travel. There is an exemption for travelers. The person who has to, uh, um, you, you, the, the taxi driver, whoever it is, take that person back to your place of residence. We don't want you, because you have that privilege 
that you want to go and pick up this year and go and pick up this day and, and that sort of thing. So we that 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 we just want to because over the we've had reports of, of such behavior. The other thing is that I mentioned earlier on, um persons are we we had some some in two two of the parishes, persons block the road and um and so on, we, we, we we're asking you to desist from such behavior. Please exercise patience and tolerance. These are measures at, that is meant to affect the entire nation positively. That is why these measures are in place. We have the responsibility as the RGPF, as the enforcing arm of the state, to enforce the law and ensure that what the law seeks to do um, is, is achieved. And so we, we want persons to be knowledgeable. We want persons to understand uh, what is happening. And, and I, I do say, Blossom, I believe persons are aware of what the law says because we've been doing that over and over again. That's why they, they run. If you have a legitimate reason why you're out, for instance, um, you're home, let's say, and you feel a, a sudden pain and you think you need to rush to the nearest health facility, you can't get a, a, a vehicle or something, or you need to walk, or, or there is a nurse, that leave somewhere and you want some advice, I don't think you'd run, would you? Nope. I think you would stand up and say, Officer, I, I, I feel a sharp pain in my chest. Exactly. I've been listening to programs, I've been listening to the medical experts, and they say, if you feel a sharp pain, or if you have flu like, like, flu like symptoms, or if you're coming down with fever, you should seek, seek help. help immediately. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get that help. Would you run for that? No. Or are you, you, you know somebody who is in, for example, a living alone, and you feel that that person might need some hot tea. I think they say big time is very good this this. And you prepare some big time, you have a flask or a cup with, with some hot tea, well masked up and so on, you you, you you observe in the protocol and you go in probably by a neighbor to drop that tea or something. Would you run if you see if you see an officer? No. You wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you that uh, it, the, the generally those who are violating their way, so we calling upon them uh, this morning to cooperate and to observe the law for the benefit i must stress it is for the benefit of all everybody because one one uh, hospitalization can create enormous um enormous pressure on the health system one death can can affect everybody in 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 a in a great way so uh we we call in for cooperation and understanding uh within the the confines of the law, observe the law. And I, I emphasize this is going to be over, but we have to do what we have to do. There comes a time when we have to be disciplined. We, there comes a time when we have to be tolerant. There comes a time when we have to be patient. And there comes a time when we have to use the faculty that God has given us, our five senses, to make sure that we protect ourselves and protect others for a better life in the future. Uh, when we spoke last week, you mentioned that there were some businesses that were issued tickets because they were uh, not... They, were, yeah, they went beyond the... They went beyond the, period. Right. Um, how will we be tackling that No, And is it still an issue? And that was after the first two weekends. Did we have that for the last No Movement weekend? Yes, yeah, some people are taking chances, and, and, and especially in the rural areas. They're taking a little chance. Um, I think they, they're taking a little chance because somehow they... They, in their mind, they think, um, let me tell you what, what I feel from my own observation. They think, I don't think the police would start to patrol at six, for instance. I think they will start nine because they passed nine last week. So I could open until about six, seven, but they don't pass in that time. It's not a matter of when the police is passing or when the police start. So the operation is a matter of you obeying what the law says for your own good and for the good of others, and essentially for the good of the nation. So this um, sort of cat and mouse behavior, that is certainly gonna, gonna put us in, in, in not in a good place. So we call in on the, on the cooperation. And the really has a, so they kind of have in their mind, um, that is where we would see the real enforcement. So, so let's take a little chance still. You know, the, you know, you know how, how we behave sometimes, but, but now is not a time to behave. I've heard the testimonies of persons that have um, been affected by the virus. And I'm calling upon our Grenadian people. This virus is very serious. 
and it can affect families for a long time to come if we do not observe what the law says. And don't don't feel, uh, don't take offense with what the police is doing. We, we are enforcing the law for the good of others. The fact that roads were blocked and the fact that uh, persons would, um, you know, kind of behave in a way that suggests that the police is interfering with their freedom and the peace and 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 and, and so on. It, it says that they're not looking at the thing from a big picture perspective. And and that is what we, we want to um, enforce. And that is what we have to emphasize this morning. And so thank you for the privilege and the facility to be able to do that. We trust that because of your facilitation, we will see a reduced number of the behaviors that, that we speak to uh, this morning. Hopefully. Um, I remember when uh, the regulations, when the RGPF spoke about the regulations in the beginning, they mentioned that they would take uh, names and numbers of people who are passing the various checkpoints. And I know of at least one person who had to provide that information. Um, have you done any follow-up to make sure you were going where you said you were going? And have you found people lied? Yes. Um, we, we, we've done some, some follow-up. And those persons who would have attempt to deceive the system, they, they, would, they, would, they would be dealt with. And we, we really like that the law give us this, this ticket privilege. So, you know, to avoid the, the, the um, arrest contact and uh, this whole um, the, the, the arrest thing would have, would have brought enormous pressure on the system. So we, we, we're glad for the ticket um, privilege so that you can get your ticket. The only thing is that um, I... You, you have to realize that when you're given a ticket, you not, not to just go and throw it home. $550 hanging over your head, you have to satisfy that, the payment of that ticket. A lot of people, they, they're not thinking about $550. And, and $550 in this time, I think is, is a huge sum. It's a huge sum. In, in, in given, given uh, all that is happening now, so do you want to risk? Um, I, I was making the, the I was drawing the analogy the other day. Do you want to risk? For instance, you're a shopkeeper. A man come, you want a, 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 a pint of rum. Uh, oh, me don't know the selling rum. I think it's eight and quarter or whatever. And um, you want a quarter of rum. I don't know what it is now. A quarter of coat. He and three men and so forth. You want to open beyond the stipulated period to sell a man a quarter of clocks coat. Let's say a quarter of clocks coat, twenty dollars. And you get a ticket for five fifty. I mean, you, you have to do the math. Not so blossom. You have exactly. to do the it's, math. It's not worth it. When you could lie down, the the the, the, the health officials are saying that sleep rejuvenates the body and build your immune system. Builds your, your immune system. Would you want to just be walking up and down the place for no reason? Rather than lying down and sleep to be rejuvenate and build your immune system. And get and at the same time get 550. We we have to just use these simple facts to be able to speak to us, you know. Instead of lying like, down and get your rest of rejuvenate your system. So when the COVID comes, you would have uh, some level of of resistance. No, you choose to be here about Okay, we seem to have a little bit of sticking. Okay, and, and, and when the police, when you say the police come burning, are you hearing me? Yes, I am. And now I'm not seeing you, though. Okay, great, 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 great. Now somebody tried to call and interfere with my, because of the phone, you know. All right. All right. All right, I'm just turning because back on the, the side. Phone. Right. Yeah, because it's the phone now, I think, yeah. No problem. But thanks. No problem. Um, yeah, so, go ahead. so you run and, and burn, burn, um, you use energy that you should have used that would have been in resolve. So if you get hit with the COVID, these simple facts that we need to tell the ordinary man on the ground, the ordinary man may not kind of assimilate all the other things that we tell him, but these simple facts as to how um, you risk yourself in, in, in a big way. And at the end of the day, it doesn't, it, it doesn't want it. It doesn't want it. Yes. I'm curious, does the RGPF score social media um, because we have a lot of people who break the rules, break the law, and they boast and brag about it on, on social media. Um, does the RGPF scour social media to see what's taking place and who's doing what and 
in an effort to follow up and ensure that law and order is still we killed? We, 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 we do. We do. Um, of course we do. And that is how we are able to improve our operational response. Because we, we, we do. When we, when we gather intelligence from social media and from, from experiences, you'll find... So, for instance, you may have seen a particular posture over the last three weekends. This weekend, you may see a different posture. And that is how we inform ourselves to be able to adjust, to, to make sure our operational responses and our operational effectiveness um, is at the level that, that, that we want to achieve our goal. So, so that is all we do. We, we, we have to do that, actually, because these days we like those who would go on social media and brag and boast. We like that because they would inform us how to do our work better. And, and so, <laughs> so we do. We do. I always shake yes. my head when I see them on, on social media. I'm like, you're already breaking the law. Why, why you tell the police that you're breaking the law? Do what you're doing in private. But no, they want to show off. I always shake my head yes. and laugh at them because, I don't know, sometimes they don't use their heads. Um, how is the RGPF doing in terms of uh, its COVID-19 numbers? I know last week we spoke of over 100 uh, being yes. medically yes. cleared. Are we back up to yes. full force or we still have one or two? No, not full force, but... but, but we, we, we thank God for his mercy upon force. We, we, we know um, smiling because of, as I said, the mercy of God with the recovery rate that we've seen. Um, it's very encouraging. It's, it's very encouraging. And, and, we, and we, as I said before, we are enforcing the protocols strictly. It, it worked for us, huh? We work for us, so uh, others would want to probably take a page from, from us. We we enforcing the protocols strictly. We're doing all that we can. Uh, the commissioner and the admi administrative team, they have put measures in place. They are providing supplies and equipment to make sure that members of the force, they are safe as it relates to to, to observance of the protocol so that members can be safe. And, and that has worked for us, and we the numbers are, are, are encouraging. They are encouraging. Good to know. Um, final thoughts as we end? Well, of course, um, I just want to reiterate um, the we need the cooperation of the entire population. And please make our, our job a little easier this weekend because we too need to recuperate. We, we too need to, need to um, rest and, and, and recreate as a normal human being. And, and if the cooperation is hard, all of us would benefit from how this, this uh, pandemic would be controlled to a level where we can almost have our normal lives again. So we beg your cooperation. And so we thank the, 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 the members of the public that opened a lot to our team. And we must thank you. We thank you profoundly for over observing the law to our team. There are members of the public that cooperate, that offer assistance to the police. Um, without, without even asking, voluntarily offer assistance to the police, tangible and otherwise. And so we thank you immensely for those members of the public. And we wish that everybody would come on board in that regard. Grenada, good morning. Be safe. Observe the laws of the protocol. And of course, sooner than later, we would have life. We would see life very close to normal again. Amen. Thank you very much, Inspector Rodney. I appreciate the information that you've reminded us of this weekend as we head into the fourth consecutive no movement weekend in an effort to curb the spread of COVID-19. Continue to stay safe. All the best to the force, Commissioner Edwin Martin, all the members of the RGPF. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks again for GBN and all the other media platforms that have facilitated us during this very crucial times. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a good day. Head of the Royal Grenada Police Forces Community Relations Department, Inspector Trevor Rodney, we thank him very much for sharing some information with us, reminding us of what needs to take place as we head into week, uh, weekend number four of no movement. We only have to be outside if you have to be outside. And even then, you have to think, do I have to be outside in truth? That's what's taking place this weekend. It starts tomorrow, God willing, at 5 p.m. and goes until Monday morning. So stock up on what you need to stock up on and get prepared for another no movement weekend let's take a break and then we're going to come back and close off the televised portion of good morning grenada on this thankful thursday
you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. To 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Your Way to Health. stations. Let's get tough on greed, yeah, larceny. It will destroy our economy. Larceny threatens our food security. Can hurt us locally, hurt us globally. To all the buyers, ask for license from our produce seller. To all the people, for police, for them deep in fella. To all the farmers, don't steal produce from your brother. Selling to traffickers, hotels, and street vendors. Nah, man. Let's do all we can to stop greedy larceny. New vigilance, new laws, and a tough judiciary. Stop Grenada's organized business crime. It's time. To report greedy larceny, call 300. It's five minutes on to eight o'clock. Thank you very much for tuning in to the televised portion of Good Morning Grenada. Always a pleasure. Um, this I was I remembered. I did not give you all the uh, latest COVID nineteen figures. I was um, so happy to see the, the, the new format that I forgot to give you the specifics. Um, so let me just give you an update. Uh, yesterday, um, they don't have the time, but uh, as of yesterday, Grenada has recorded 5,140 COVID-19 cases since March 2020. That's overall. Uh, the numbers have risen because of the addition of 101 new cases recorded yesterday. So we added 101 new cases. Active cases are now at 1,000 1,584. Yesterday, we had 56 recoveries, four deaths. So far, we've had accumulation of 139 COVID-19-related deaths. According to the dashboard, 2.9 of those deaths, 2.9% of those deaths were for fully vaccinated uh, patients. 0.7% was partially vaccinated, and the unvaccinated number is 96.4%. 96.4% of the 139 deaths were unvaccinated people. Uh, there are currently 70 people in hospital. Uh, the test positivity is 20.7%. Yesterday, they carried out 487 uh, tests. Cumulatively, 69,590 deaths. In terms of the, sorry, not deaths, 
tests. In terms of the vaccines, 23,980 people have received two doses of a COVID-19 vaccine, while 10,402 people have only received one and are considered partially vaccinated. So far, 58,362 doses of vaccines have been administered. So those are the latest COVID-19 uh, figures, according to the Ministry of Health dashboard. So continue to be safe. Uh, this morning, somebody, uh, well, not this morning, yesterday, somebody asked about testing sites and vaccination sites. They continue at the National Stadium. Today's Thursday, so St. Augustine Medical Station from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Health centers, uh, Dr. Francis Martin, former PS, uh, he has gone back into private practice and he's also administering tests and vaccination at his private practice in St. George's, I believe it's Grenville Street. Uh, but Dr. Francis Martin, Martin's office is also providing tests and vaccinations. You can also get tested and vaccinated at the Guave Polyclinic um, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So keep that in mind, those of you who are interested. And in the meantime, let's get ready for the BBC's 8 a.m. newscast. Thank you so very much for tuning in to Good Morning Grenada. Stay safe. Protocols in full effect. Please, I don't want you to be among the statistics. Get vaccinated. Those of you who are interested, Stay safe, everybody. Have yourselves an enjoyable, thankful Thursday. Good